Right, oh, so this is the fourth um, video in our Cam Trapar series. What we've done so far is to set up the data, um, ex extract the data, um, create some summary CSV files, and create a detection history, which we'll, we'll use later on. What I'm going to show you now is how to create some maps and activity plots. Um, this is pretty straightforward. Uh, but I'm going to take this a little bit further in this video and show you how to turn your detection plots into KML files. So we use a different approach um, than we used in the, in the um, points to KML um, tutorial or that we used earlier on in our semester where we were turning kangaroo home ranges into KML files. Some of you who were um, completed their tasks in the computer workshops um, would have already been shown this by myself but the majority of you won't have and I think this will be really useful for you. So we're going to start off by telling R where we want to dump our species plots and so um, this folder species plots is here, I've already created it, and you saw me in an earlier video go through and just empty out some of my earlier working so we could start afresh. So uh, for our dete detection maps function, the the, um, the script that we used in the computer workshop and on the HTML document was a basic one, like this. Um, again, I'm going to have to change the record table. So hopefully you're seeing as I do this how what a, what a trap it could be to not have got rid of that original species record table because we could just run this bit of code and we'd, there'd be no indication, oh, apart from the fact it had some dodgy species in it, that we'd made a mistake. So let's just uh, see how this goes. So it's created those species plots, so these should look a bit familiar to you. Um, because we have had species to show blanked out, it's just done every species. So there's the, the station, the legend is how many detections for that species there were. This is the Balumba Creek transect again. And we can use this arrow and just scroll through them. What I want to deal with here is this species richness plot. So let's redo this, but in a way that will turn it will export this species richness plot as a KML file. I'll just go back to here just so you can see that in species plots now all of these that I just cycled through are saved. So um, you could potentially insert these into a document. Um, but as you'll see, if you do it as a KML file, you actually get the background, you know, the landscape in there as well. As it is like this, it's not you know, as informative as it could be. So let's do this again. But this time, rather than creating PNGs, we're going to create shapefiles. So first of all, I have to specify the coordinate reference system that we're in. And for our latitude and longitude, um, uh, spatial coordinates, which I've got highlighted here, our X and our Y columns. Um, that's the appropriate one. So what I've done here is I've gone through and I've added some extra code. So richness plot equals true, meaning it's going to generate a species richness plot, but I've told not to create all the individual species plots. Because we're doing this as a shape file, we have to just do one at a time. And I've added some extra lines in here. You know, write shapefile true, give the shapefile a name. Again, you want that name to be meaningful. So I'm going to call this Balumba Creek. Oh, gosh. Balumba Creek. Twenty nineteen. Um, again, I'm telling it I want it to put the shape files into that same directory that these PNG files went into. Um, and off here, I'm telling it this is the coordinate system that we're going to use. So I'll run that. Ah, I've done it again. So 
So this is a warning message, and this is simply telling us that the um, the column heading names that are in our um, record table are too long, so it's going to abbreviate them. That's fine. I'll show you what I mean in a sec, what this means in a sec. I just want to update, go through and change all this. I had this set up for the full set of um, camera trap sites, which is why I need to do this. And I'm going to go in, in and change it all the way through so that I don't forget. Um, so what have I just done? I've done this, this one, so I'm up to here. So this is just giving us some info that we can see. Mm, that looks okay. It's got there's 12 features, that's 12 sites, and 25 fields. So that's the columns. So that seems to have worked. We're just going to have a look now and just check. Yep, it's turned it into a spatial point data frame. And then we're going to have a look at the data that's in there. So this is what it was talking about earlier, where it's um, abbreviated the column names. So the data that it's using here, we've got the station, we've got the coordinates, and then we've got the number of detections of each species. And a final column, which is the number of species in total. That's our species richness, essentially. So that all looks okay. What we need to do now is to change the station name. If we go um, structure, shapefile test, you can see that um, station is in as a factor. So there's station and it's a factor. What we need to do here and what we're about to do here is to turn it, convert it to a character. And we need to do that because for our conversion from a shapefile to a KML file, it has to be a character rather than a factor, otherwise things won't work. So we're going to plot that shapefile. So there's all the the plots, they look like they're in the right configuration. We're going to add the species data and we're going to um, create labels which will show up um, in our KML file. This is turned off. Um, we'd only use this if our shape file had been created using um, UTMs or Eastings and Northings, but we don't need to do this, we're all good. So we've created the shape file, now we're going to turn it into a um, KML file. Oh, we're doing a bit of work on the legend. So the KML file, we've started the process. So what we're doing here, we're saying this is the shape file we're using. The size of the dots, or the species richness, is based on that column N specs. You'll remember that that's the species richness out of our shapefile data. We're creating a legend, and the legend is based on the number of specimens, the number of species, I should say. Then we're going to close it. Oh, not came off screen. Then we're going to close it. So this has to be the same name as the start. So that's done. So if we go back to files, we can see there's a KML file. Let's have a look at how that looks in Google Earth. Exciting stuff. I'm just going to turn that off, one that I did earlier. File open, file open, and I'll just navigate to my working directory where I dumped that species richness KML file, and in it goes. And uh, I'm just going to get it all nice and horizontal and drag it down, square it up. So there we have our 12 points.
with a legend um, colour coded and by size of the species richness in each. And you can go ahead and turn that into a JPEG image and insert that into your Word document um, as part of your results. Um, I'm going to do a bit of work on, I think it would be nice to also have a legend for the size and what that represents, but this is a work in progress, so for now you guys just um, carry on um, and use this. If I, if I come up with an update um, prior to um, the report date, then um, you may choose to use it, but I won't penalise you for not. Um, so there we have it. We've just created a um, a KML file of our species of our species richness detection, and you could follow this exact same process from this point onwards, um, doing a species detection file for any of the individual species that were in there. So if you're going to do that, I'll just I'll just copy this bit. You would give it a meaningful name, so you might call it um, RF detections. Um, the only thing that's going to change is you're going to go um, richness plot, you'd go false. And you'd turn that on. Change the name of the output file, but nothing else changes. Uh, what, what's the problem here? deleted the last bracket. Oh, I didn't copy it in the closing bracket. There. So you could just run that. Again, it's telling us that it's abbreviated the file name. Um, and then you'd obviously have to do all the rest of this, adjusting your file names and various bits and pieces as you go as well. Um, be careful that if that you don't overwrite your previous work. So, you know, really important to get in the habit of um, you know, updating those names before you, in, in the full set of um, code before you run it. Right, so that's it for producing the KML files. I'm not going to go into the activity plots here. Um, the activity plots are not maps, they're just graphs. So there's sort of nothing to be done there in terms of converting them into KMLs or shapefiles. And I think it's pretty straightforward what you do there. So I'm not going to cover that in this video. That brings us to a close for the CamTrap R uh, material for ENS316. Um, I should add that you could also perform all of these functions for individuals. If we were working on feral cats or quolls or lace monitors and we had animals with unique natural markings that we could give them individual identities, we could go through and pretty much do everything that we've already done but focusing on the individuals of a species rather than on different species. But the data that we have from our field trip won't let us do that and I think this is plenty for you to do. So I'll, I'm also going to do another video which will um, demonstrate for you um, how to perform an occupancy analysis um, on the data using the Rattus Fuscopes detection history that we created earlier.